Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had an amazing weekend so far. Today guys, we're going to be jumping predominantly into Cardano, but we're also going to be looking at the crypto space as a whole and what direction it's moving in. So we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin of course, and I'm going to be actually going over an article um, that essentially is Bloomberg based, where one of the senior strategists from Bloomberg is essentially calling for Bitcoin and Ethereum in this case, uh, to be a part of any kind of an investment portfolio. And that's the way that I believe the crypto space is going. I think we're not yet an established asset class, if you will. We're yet to become one. This is going to have a lot of money um, on the back end of it flowing into the crypto space. And ultimately, I believe the future looks um, very crypto friendly. I think in terms of investment, uh, crypto is going to become a real viable option. It is for us retail guys, but it's going to become uh, part of every hedge fund, part of every institutional arm, etc, uh, etc. Et so we're going to cover that in this video. It's always good to kind of look at a, a bigger time frame and, and where the space is kind of going as a whole to give you guys a little bit of confidence uh, moving forwards. So what we're going to do today, guys, we're going to look at Cardano. I'm going to be telling you what's going on right now because people are getting a little bit annoyed. Cardano is a bit of a crab. It tends to kind of, you know, have these kind of very fast and short lived moves where we've achieved a lot, like, for example, um, you can see from the bottom here, we called this perfectly, by the way, guys. So even where we are today, uh, and this took place in over just over a month, we're up uh, around about 178%, and, and we actually went up to nearly 200%, and we did that within a month. So what you want to expect is some consolidation, which is what you're getting here. And in my opinion, guys, what Cardano is doing is it's coiling up, it's tightening the springs, ready for a move to the upside. Uh, and I do believe you are going to get that. There are many people... Um, you guys know that I'm very bullish on Cardano. I've kept you up to date on my Twitter. Uh, this is a post that I posted earlier saying that I had a touch of deja vu. You know, this structure here um, looks very similar to the one that we're currently going through. You've got these kind of mini falling wedges uh, that, are, that are pop outs really um, going to be on the tail end of, in my opinion. But people always ask me, uh, and I'm going to be telling and sharing with you a good entry point that I'm very confident to take and I'm going to be taking in the crypto space if this certain thing takes place. But people always ask me, uh, why is the price going down? I always get comments saying, why is the price going down? And that's kind of like asking why a diesel engine uses combustion. Um, this is just how it works. Markets work in a weird and wonderful way. Uh, many people out there don't quite understand how markets work. The actual um, supply, the actual how markets work is on order books and the actual traded um, liquidity. So, for example, Bitcoin, I think it's around about 82 million um, Bitcoin, $82 million worth of Bitcoin would essentially move it 1% either way. So it's actually a very small amount of the overall supply that's actually traded and causes these markets to move in, in, in this kind of a fashion. So for example, when Cardano sold off by, what did we sell off by? Around about 70 something percent. That was a bit more than that. Around about 66%. 66% uh, of the supply wasn't sold. It was just the liquid supply that was sold that caused it to do that. And this is how markets work. It's, it's not, it's, they're kind of a poor reflection. The price is kind of a bit of a lie, if you will. Uh, and that's a little side note that I think is important for people to remember, which is why on this channel, we always look at fundamentals. And in terms of, car, in terms of fundamentals, Cardano has got it going on. Um, so that's essentially what I think you're doing for uh, Cardano. I think you're just coiling up. Um, I think essentially, you know, th this kind of sideways action, when, when we go sideways, because of, you know, how this was kind of, um, and, and certainly Wyckoff distribution was present here, people think that we're, we're doing a similar thing today. And I've already stated that we're absolutely not. Um, we've shown you plenty of examples when we've done, uh, and I'll show you one just now, just very briefly for you. Uh, we've done plenty of examples to show you that, you know, the markets can go sideways. You know, this is kind of how things work in the crypto space. Can you see this kind of sideways action? Very similar to what you're doing today, ladies and gents. Uh, and this is kind of where you are, you know, and, and you can get a break to the outside of this. It doesn't have to happen. I'm also going to talk to you about volume because the volume right now is pretty much non-existent. But this is a good thing, believe it or not. You know, we're coming to the end of summer. We've seen very, very low volume. And I'll switch over to this chart really as a whole throughout this time period. And this is because people go away for the summer period. You know, we sold off significantly in May. This is uh, traditionally what happens, you know, there's a famous saying out there that traders on the London Stock Exchange used to use called sell in May and come back in St. Leger's Day. So sell before the summer, come back in uh, after the summer's finished when everyone's ready to um, kind of get more serious and don't want to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. You've had a compounded effect with that due to what everyone's gone through. Everyone's essentially been locked up uh, for two years um, and, and I've had a little bit of freedom reinstated to them, which is a joke, but hey-ho, we're not going to go down that road on this channel. Um, so 
what we are now doing is coming to the back end of summer and I do believe that we are going to finish this year much the same we finish every cycle like 2017 for example uh, you know this is really September and it wasn't really till the, the end of the year on both um, cycle end years uh, both ball runs or, or, or epic ball runs as you will uh, your ball run really starts the year before um, that we see the kind of blow off top and, and the mania take place and the FOMO really kick in and that's how I'm expecting this year to play out um, so that's really what's going on. You're just coiling up now and I'm anticipating a move to the upside. I don't think that you're going to get a, a, a horrific move to the downside. But I am actually, um, and I'm going to talk to you about it in this video, guys, looking for an entry point for Cardano because you guys know that I have uh, been accumulating Cardano for a long time. I'm very happy with my position. It's essentially just left staking. Uh, and I will be taking some of it out to get involved with some of the protocols like we already uh, put some over to the meld. Uh, ISPO and we're going to be doing the same with like Sunday swap and things like that which is also going to increase the demand for Cardano because people are going to want to get into these products and you can only do that in some cases in an ISO uh, initial stake offering initial stake pool offering so you actually need Cardano to do that um, but I am actually looking for an entry point and the entry point that I'm looking for is to do with the daily EMAs so for those of you asking for an entry point please don't take this as advice remember I do believe this market's going to get very parabolic um, so we may never even get here. But one thing that I will be confident will if we with if we do is if we come back to this EMA um, on the daily time frame, the 20 EMA. That's what I'm looking for because essentially, uh, and let me just talk to you about this in this video. Uh, we will cover the Bloomberg article and we will look at Bitcoin um, in just a second. Um, but let me just make this point very clear. I've always got so much information to share and I feel like sometimes I ramble on and, and don't quite get through it all. So just bear with me, guys, because this is important and this is something that I'm certainly looking out for in order to accumulate more. And, and the fact that I'm willing to accumulate at all time high prices essentially um, is a real sign of the confidence that I have in this technology. Uh, I mean, Cardano could sell off from here. Let's say I did buy where I'm planning on. It could sell off and I would just hold it for the long term. That's how confident I am that this project is gonna to get to where it goes to. Um, so if you were gonna play this sort of third wave out, Essentially, what you'd have done is you'd have looked at the first wave and you'd looked at characteristics and you'd have applied that to this. And, and one characteristic that is apparent, and I spoke to you about it on many occasions on this channel, is when you kind of make your break and you, you are in this kind of impulsive wave, this one wave in your edit wave or your three wave or your fourth wave, typically they'll follow a suit. And one, one suit that's certainly there, one trait that's there is you come back to this EMA each and every time. Can you see this? Before setting up for continuation. In a downtrend, here's what you do. You do the opposite. You reverse. Uh, because there's there's a kind of ebb and flow to markets, if you will, um, and and people still refuse to believe that this is an actual viable uh, method of of doing things and looking for entry points because an EMA is like an indicator. It actually works very well and has actually shown us that, and I'm I'm hopefully proving that point to you to this day. So drop your 20 EMA on. You, you can put your 50s or your 55s or whatever you want to use. Um, but if you see this, guys, you always will come back to it. So when I'm looking for an entry point, and bear in mind, you know, look at this run here. I mean, you didn't come back to it for a very long time. And in actual fact, if you go and watch my early Cardano videos, right around here, we said you're very, you're, I think your EMA was around about here, and we said you're overextended, you are gonna come back to it. And lo and behold, you did. And that's not because we've got a crystal ball or a genius. We've just been in these markets for long enough to know how they move. And that is what I'm kind of expecting uh, for this. And that would be, in my opinion, much the same as these moves on the, on the kind of run up. Um, would have been a good entry point essentially is what I'm uh, what I'm looking out for here. So I'm looking out for a, a kind of reconnection, a rekindling with this EMA, um, and then I will accumulate because I can say, and this is not advice, guys. Please do your own due diligence. Timing the markets is so dangerous in the crypto space because it is unpredictable um, and volatile, um, and they are things that are there's pros and cons to everything in life. Um, you know, I had my wing mirrors kicked off. Um, yesterday, somebody kicked both my wing mirrors off, not just mine, a number of other people on the street. Um, and that was a really, you know, it's like 12, 1300 quids worth of damage that I'm now going to have to pay for. Um, but essentially, the silver lining that was, you know, I went to a garage that got fixed and I've now got that connection with the garage. And in actual fact, they actually fixed it for free and said, look, when you get the new ones, come back and we'll, we'll charge you a very low price. So that was, there's always a silver lining in life and you've got to look for it. Um, and this, you know, is what I'm kind of expecting. And, and in actual fact, in terms of percentages, how far have you got to sell off to get there? And I'm not 100% convinced you are going to just sell off from here. I think I think a more likely scenario is uh, something similar to this over here, where you kind of do this. 
and you kind of rekindle with it before you then get that impulsion. That's more of a likely scenario that I'm looking for. But when we do get this retouch here, that'll be when I'll be accumulating because based on previous structure, based on previous kind of price action, that's how things work. Um, so can you see this? This is what I'm kind of, you know, anticipating. I'm anticipating that you do come down to it at some point. When that will be, it doesn't have to, we don't have to sell off. We could go a little bit sideways before we kiss it and then come off. Come off. And it wouldn't be long till we get there. Um, you can see that that's about an 8% drop. So not a, not a significant one at all. And I do expect this to hold you as it has done in every single impulsive move. You might sell off it slightly, but it, it's only very briefly. So that would be a good entry point if people are looking for one. I'm very happy to be honest with you. One reason I'm kind of willing to sit this out um, for now is just simply because I've already accumulated Cardano, you know, I, I, the majority of my Cardano was accumulated at sub 10 cents. So I'm exceptionally happy with where I am. I've been in these markets for four years and, and learned a lot as a result. Um, and I'm very fortunate to be an early investor in a lot of these projects. But to be honest with you guys, I do actually think that you are going to get a break out of here. I am expecting more upside. If you look how beautiful your 50 EMA, not your 55, your 55 would actually probably hold you a little bit better. Your 50, your 50 is actually holding you much the same as you did over here, much the same as you did over here. You're kind of setting up for a bit of a pop out in my opinion. And that's kind of what I'm expecting. Um, but you could just, you could essentially just do this. Just keep making little marginal higher highs. Come back to this, uh, let's have a look. EMA and the daily, you know, something like, I don't know, this before you then set off for your impulsion. And that would be fantastic guys. And you'd got your entry point ready for more price continuation. And the price, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident um, or as confident as I can be. Nobody is gonna be 100% confident. We are gonna get to that $7.50 to $10 price range. In terms of market cap guys, it's really only a 3x from where we are today, um, which isn't even $300, $300 billion, which I think we can very easily get to. I think this market as a whole is moving towards a $10 trillion mark, and we're going to see a lot of that flow in uh, this year, towards the end of this year, and, and we'll see how the cycles play out, whether we repeat the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory or we don't. Nobody really has the answer to that. We can only take our best guesses, and if you look at the institutions and everything that's involved, there is some data to suggest that we may not have such a severe sell-off and enter some, we, we will have a sell-off of sorts and we will have a kind of cycle of sorts, but it may not be in this kind of traditional four-year cycle theory. And, and you've got to remember, you know, this four-year cycle theory has, has been so kind of prominent due to the fact that uh, Bitcoin has really been the big boy in the space. Bitcoin's dominance has been getting eaten away out and I believe that's going to continue to be the trend. And um, because Bitcoin, we all have, Satoshi was a genius, but it's old technology at this point. Um, Things like Ethereum came after it, the newer technology, you've got things like Cardano, et cetera, et cetera. And ETH2, by the way, Ethereum is gonna move that way. Um, it's gonna evolve, uh, but Bitcoin is relatively stagnant. You do have people building DeFi. We're actually in some DeFi Bitcoin projects, which we can talk about if you'd like, let me know in the comments. Um, but this article from Bloomberg, this is the way that the crypto space is going. Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomberg senior uh, strategist calls Bitcoin a global reserve asset on the path to 100K. Following a massive correction, digital asset led by Bitcoin and Ethereum are on track for new highs according to a uh, new report from Bloomberg. The only thing with this is, when the price sold off, Bloomberg are like, yeah, we, you know, it's over, we're going to 10K, 20K. It, the media are just so choppy and changey and just jump on the bandwagon. But this quote is really what I, the, what I wanna take from this because this is the way that I believe uh, things are moving. Um, portfolios of some combination of, of gold and bonds appear increasingly naked without some Bitcoin and Ethereum joining the mix. A macro risk off decline is a primary threat for the crypto bull market. Um, so I believe in the future, every single it, crypto is, is, is a real asset. I know that, but it's going to be accepted as one when we have regulatory clarity, et cetera, et cetera. These things are all coming and are all going to be in some ways negative, remember there's a silver lining in everything, but in, in other ways very positive. Uh, we foresee a future of Bitcoin, the digital reserve asset, complementing the dollar reserve currency. We're a while off this guys, and my um, only thing with this statement is do you really think the people in power are gonna allow that to happen without some serious backlash? I'm not convinced. Um, I think that people are too easily bought um, but that's for another story and we will cover that on another video. So that's really all I have for you guys. Stay, stay, stay huddling uh, is, is one of the main messages. Um, you know, to me, I think we could quite likely see a break uh, coming very, very soon. You're holding things, you're setting up structure, you're, you're setting up this falling wedge. 
Um, and ultimately I do think you're going to break in much the same fashion that you have done previously. Now some people are calling, and this is something that I will quickly note, for a rising wedge. Dun dun dun. That you've kind of broken out of the downside to. Now, yeah, it is kind of there, but it's more of a kind of funnel um, than anything. Um, and ultimately, I did say I'd speak about the volume, so let me do that very quickly before I move on. Uh, not move on, wrap this video up. I'm just, see what I mean, guys? I end up rambling on, getting distracted, but there's so much information that I'm, I'm trying to cram in here for you uh, that it's sometimes not uh, the easiest thing to do, uh, especially with a mind like mine, which, um, you know, is uh, a funny one. Um, so, yeah, so that, that, that that's where we're on, guys. That's where we're at. Uh, and one thing I want to point out is, can you see after these moves, the, these kind of impulsive moves here? Look at the volume. So can you see? Your volume goes up, it comes down. Ready for your next move. This is the this is the case everywhere. I hope you guys are seeing what I'm saying. It volume goes up, volume goes down, volume goes up, volume goes down, volume goes up, and there's move to the upside associated. Now look, your volume went up. Let me move uh, this a little bit to the side so you guys can see that. Um, your volume went up. Now it's come down. It will come back up again, guys, and I reckon that you know your summer holidays are coming to an end. Everything's coming to an end, and people are going to start trading and taking things seriously again. So expect fireworks, guys. You're in the right asset class, in my opinion, um, and just enjoy the ride. That's all I have for you in this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to love and leave you on that note, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next YouTube video. If you've enjoyed the content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching.